All right, greetings and welcome to the kickoff of the 2022 employee giving campaign season. Now, quick question for you. How many of you remember ever using one of these? Now, I know I'm dating myself now a little bit, but you remember when part of the process of preparing for a trip meant either going down to AAA or mapping your route out on one of these? Hopefully when you took your trip, you had someone helping you to co-navigate and read one of these maps. And hopefully by the end of your trip, you landed where you were supposed to, or sometimes not, that didn't happen always. But thankfully these days are over and things have evolved. We can get rid of these and navigation tools are right at our fingertips. Even better news, the same is true in terms of navigating your way through your workplace giving campaign. We have amazing resources and current tools that are right now at your fingertips, making it so much easier to, na to navigate safe successfully through your campaign. So over the next 30 to 40 minutes, we will share with you five steps to successfully map out your employee giving campaign. Are you ready? All right, let's get started. My name is Melanie, and I'm joined today by my fellow Global Impact Campaign Engagement team members. We have Jillian, Lauren, Deanna, whom you'll hear from all in the next few minutes. We are so honored to be your hosts, or rather your tour guides for today. And rest assured, we will continue with you on this journey beyond today. At Global Impact, our mission is to inspire greater giving for global causes. Our charities work across causes like disaster relief, supporting refugees, empowering others, especially women and girls, alleviating poverty, and so much more. We have charities in our federation like Care, Save the Children, uh, Food for the Poor, and many others that are delivering life-saving support to people around the world as we speak. So we want to give a quick shout out to some of our charities who made time today to attend this event in support of us as we support you. Thank you very much. Just so you know, today's webinar is being recorded and it will be made available to you on Zoom Demand and our Employee Giving Hub. Your questions and comments are very important to us, so please use the chat feature at any time throughout today's event so our chat hosts can answer and address your questions. And then lastly, we value your time. So today's brief webinar is just an intro. We'll, we invite you to reach out to us directly so you can set up your personal planning session. We wanna share additional success strategies directly with you and can support your specific campaign needs throughout the giving season. So speaking of campaign needs, before we go into step number one, Let's kind of gauge where you are in your campaign planning. So we just popped up a poll and go ahead and tell us where you are. Are you just beginning in your planning? Are you all set and ready to go? Some of you might be somewhere in between. And then we know there's a few of you who just aren't even sure. This might be your first time being a campaign manager. So let us know. We'll give you a few more seconds. Still have some responses coming in. All right, I think we're good. As we see, all right, the majority of you are somewhere in between. Hey, don't worry, as you can see, these, your responses are anonymous. So no matter where you are in your planning, there is still time to prepare and launch a successful campaign. The tips that we share with you today can be applied at any stage, so don't worry, we've got you covered. And look, most of you already are either just beginning or somewhere in between, and that's fine. And on that note, let's go ahead and start with step number one. All right, step number one, begin with the end in mind. Our team has a saying, successful campaigns don't just happen. Just like you don't just happen to arrive at your desired destination. So when you want directions on your GPS, you have to decide and then enter your final desired destination. So in essence, GPS systems calculate that path for where you wanna go starting from where you are or where you're planning to be to take you to where you wanna go. 
The same is true regarding planning your employee giving campaign. What you want to do is start by envisioning how you want your campaign to end. What type of impact or success do you want that workplace giving campaign to have by the time that you wrap things up? This could be in terms of a dollar goal, a percentage, a participation. Uh, it could be a certain number of charities that your organization wants to support or whatever campaign results that you and your team envision. That's what you want to first start with getting that big picture. Then that desired result will help dictate your plan and it will be the driving force that motivates your actions, your events, and your activities. And just to help you get started, here's some factors for you to consider as you're envisioning and planning. Like consider last year's results. Were you and your leadership and your organization as a whole happy with those results? Did y'all set a fundraising goal? If not, maybe this is the year to set that goal. Again, think in terms of the type of impact that you want to have. Maybe this is the year for that stretch goal. While giving is voluntary, setting a direction and a vision can make a significant difference in employees deciding to participate. How about establishing a meaningful, engaging theme for your campaign this year? Do you have already uh, active campaign dates, like a beginning and an end? Have those dates been communicated to everyone at your organization? How about kicking off your campaign? Have you thought about a fun way to get people started and excited about giving this campaign season? Some other thoughts are, how are you gonna communicate? What's the best method? We're still in, in that hybrid world for a lot of us where some people are working a few days a week. So think about the best mode of communication for all your employees. Um, some employees have to told us in the past that they don't really hear much about their uh, workplace giving campaigns anymore. So if that's your case, then you wanna make sure this year that you're communicating to everyone. And then if you do decide to set a goal, Keep that goal in front of the entire organization so you can start marking your progress and then consider at the end of the campaign season having a fun thank you celebration. Who doesn't like a party? And I know this may sound like a lot to remember, but remember our saying, successful campaigns don't just happen. Also remember, we're here for you. We're here to help you and we're along your journey. We've created resources and valuable tools to make it easier for you to navigate your campaign. In fact, this is the perfect time for Jillian to go ahead and share step number two. Perfect, thanks so much, Melanie. Um, if all of you have worked on employee giving campaigns before, you know, you have on your list of what you did last year and you know how to replicate it, right? But there's probably a few things that you meant to get to that maybe fall off your radar or maybe you didn't quite reach that goal when you were testing out that new strategy last year. So um, I want you to know that there's there's no need to build new elements when you're testing out new things. There's no need to start from scratch. We have all the resources that you need right here. So I'm going to call step two, don't reinvent the wheel. One stop along your journey is our employee giving hub. There you'll find all kinds of resources that we've put together for you and we've built what you need. So uh, some of our top resources are trainings, help your coordinators get comfortable and confident making asks from their colleagues and, and think through how to engage different generations in your workplace. We've got engagement tools, you know, pick and choose from different event ideas, volunteer activities, games, and more to help you build an engaging and exciting campaign. There's gonna be more on this in a little bit from Lauren. We've got cause kits. You know your employees wanna learn more about the charities that they can give to, but it can sometimes be overwhelming to help break that down for them. So our cause kits offer you everything you need to kind of package these different causes to your donors. And then we've got a lot of marketing support. So no more hunting through your inbox and trying to take stuff from websites. We've got the photos, videos, dollar statements, and meaning, meaningful stories that you need to paint that picture for your employees and communicate that impact with our charities materials. So now what we're going to go ahead and do, I'm going to share my screen and we're just going to quickly walk through the employee giving hub together because I want you to see how easy it is and how many resources we have. 
Um, you're going to get an invitation after this webinar. It's going to come from Cassie Call via Brand Folder, and it's going to send you directly to the hub. Once you get that, you're going to be able to poke through and explore all these resources on your own. But I wanted to just give you a quickly a land. So here, all of our resources are broken down either by content type in the sections, or you can use these pins if you're looking for something a little bit more focused on a particular theme. So if you want something that's clean water or the Ukraine response, you can use those as well. Scrolling through, you'll see what I mean, all of these different resources and things to engage with. Um, here's those trainings I was talking about earlier. But a couple things I wanted to quickly highlight. Under our Get Started, there's a ton of great kind of intro resources on here. I really like the how to show colleagues you care about a cause at work and our campaign ambassador guide is also really helpful. And then I also wanted to show you quickly the employee engagement tools. This is our most popular section and overwhelmingly our most popular resource is the employee engagement opportunities list. Tons of really great virtual activities and volunteer ideas, things like that that our charities offer. The virtual event ideas list is also really helpful just to kind of help you brainstorm and think through a couple ideas this year. One last thing that I want to do, I want to show you how to uh, download the resources and how to engage with some of the stuff on the site. So when you click view on any of the individual tiles, this is the resource itself. You're going to go over here and hit this blue download button, and then automatically that resource is going to pop up. This is our support for employee resource groups, all the materials that our charities have that can help you kind of engage with ERGs. It's really great. Um, but as you can see, it pops up. It's super easy. And if you want to pull multiple things, all you have to do is check multiple of these little boxes. And then down here, this little download button will appear, and that'll just download as a zip file. You can also hit share if you have another colleague who you want to check this out. So that's the employee giving hub. Um, again, it's easy to use. It's got great resources. Uh, pretty much wherever you're at in the planning process, um, we've got something on there for you that you can use. So keep an eye out for that invite from Brand Folder so you can kind of check that out for yourself later today. And I am going to pass it over to you, Lauren. Great. Thanks, Jillian. So you've thought through your game plan and have the resources to get things started. And now it's really important to think creatively about how you're going to meet those goals you set and keep your employees engaged. So we enter into step number three, stay engaged and proactive. We can help you stay proactive by laying out a few different touch points that you can use throughout your campaign. So let's start with the big one, events. This is by far the number one way to be able to connect your employees to your campaign. They're fun and engaging and give you the opportunity to be able to share more about the campaign and how employees can make their pledge. We know employee and giving campaigns are all about raising funds for important causes and charities. And events are a really great chance to highlight that need, but they're also a great tool for building community at your organization. As many of us have been, you know, in the virtual or hybrid work life for some time, office culture has changed for us, and we're having to invest more effort to be able to build those connections between employees. And events have a really high payoff for that. And there's a number of endless ways to be able to host events effectively. We've seen really deep, meaningful events from charities responding in places like Ukraine and Afghanistan to super fun, silly contests like throwing pies in the face of senior leaders or trivia nights. So depending on you and your organization, you can definitely find an event that feels right for your campaign. We've created a few resources that are on that employee giving hub that Jillian just walked you through um, that offer you a really good place to start when planning your events for your campaign. So whether you want to organize a volunteer event or a virtual 5K, a movie screening, or a weekly lunch and learn series, um, these are all great possibilities that we can help walk you through. So the next step to staying engaged and proactive is to think about marketing of your campaign. People have to hear a message seven times before they'll take action. So you really need to reach people across different channels and be super creative with your messaging to ensure that your employees are taking that next step to pledging. So utilize things like emails, blog posts, internet sites, flyers, social media, chat channels, literally whatever channel that you have available that is connecting you with your employees. Some important tips that you'll want to consider when building these communications is to make sure that you're telling stories. Use story, using storytelling can really help 
Connect your employees to the cause areas and will motivate them to give generously during your campaign. You can utilize infographics or dollar by statements to highlight impact or encourage people to share personal and charity stories and videos are a great tool for that. You'll also want to communicate urgency. Getting urgency across in your message is essential. People are switching from their phones to tablets to computers around 27 times in an hour. So it's really important that your message stands out and is communicating that need. Also, keep it simple. Avoid overcomplicating your message and stick to the high points. Thanks to things like texting and instant messages, people are used to short, quick, and effective ways of communicating. So they want to get to that point simply and directly. And then finally, most important, do not forget to say thank you. People enjoy having their contributions recognized publicly. So note their good deeds, thank them, and engage with them often. If you're helping enable them to become passionate about a cause, they can then transfer that passion and um, influence their peers into giving in your campaign. So a few other ideas for you to encourage or for you to consider engaging with this fall include things like a cause of the week, week or month promotion. We've seen a lot of success with these promotions and campaigns. It gives you a framework to promote different charities and gives employees ideas for what to learn more about and consider pledging to. Or create a cause wall. This can be done in person at your organization or virtually on an internal website. And celebrate observance days. On our employee giving hub, we have all of this year's cause awareness days in one place. And we've also created a calendar that will help you explore which observance days line up with your campaign dates or themes. So our last tip is to be sure to involve charities in what you're doing, especially events. They, we, um, the charities will be able to connect with your employees and share firsthand the impact that your employees are able to have when donating through your campaign. We're happy to help coordinate charity speakers or provide digital materials like photos, videos, and stories from charities for you to be able to use on your own. So please reach out to us with your event schedule and needs and we're happy to help. So before I hand things off to Deanna, let's see an example of an engagement tactic in action. Prices are a really great way to be able to incentivize your employees at events. And right now we have an opportunity for two of you to be able to win a fun giveaway from us. So what I want you to do is if you have already hosted a campaign event featuring a charity this year, please enter your name and email into the host and panelist chat. And the first two who will do so will be sent an awesome giveaway from us. So we'll keep an eye out for those winners over the next few slides. But for now, um, I'll shoot it off to Deanna to share with you step number four. All right, thank you, Lauren. So regardless of whether you signed up for this role or you were voluntold that you'd be managing your employee giving campaign, remember that you're not alone. Step four is to know the players on your team. In fact, we hope that you consider us a part of your team. Our role as your relationship manager is to support you and assist your campaign efforts. So as you've seen and heard today, we've designed many valuable resources for you to use. Stay connected with us by sharing updates, successes, and highlights of your campaign season. We would love to feature your campaign on our social media channels. Also, feel free to reach out to us to discuss some of your frustrations or those unanticipated detours that tend to come along the way. Again, we are here for anything you need, whether that's brainstorming or finding something specific that you don't see on the Employee Giving Hub. For example, we often have campaigns reach out to us because they need giveaway items or specific charity materials or cause themes. We can also help you plan um, a campaign event, as Lauren mentioned, really help you think through how to set some giving goals or offer input on your marketing strategy. So on the screen, if you see somebody that you've connected with in the past, um, consider them your go-to at Global Impact. But if you're new to our work, feel free to reach out to any of us and we're more than happy to help. We also wanted to recommend that you keep an eye out for our emails, um, that they come with tips, tools, and more to help out your campaign. Again, our job really is to help make your campaign a success. 
Additionally, within your own organizations, there are plenty of places for you to go for support and ideas. Many campaigns organize formal campaign volunteers known as key workers or ambassadors. These are folks that you can tap on to help you promote the campaign, plan events, design emails, and track down last minute donors. We have an entire guide for organizing your volunteers called the Campaign Ambassador Guide that we hope you'll check out. I also like to think of colleagues as champion campaign supporters. Think of those as your informal volunteers. So on your team, who are the fun, energy giving party planners just looking for an opportunity to host an event? Or who's that young person on your team who always talks about boosting your organization's social media presence? These are the people that you can go to for help on specific projects that you might not have had the capacity to take on, but would like to accomplish during your campaign. Leadership support is another crucial component to a successful campaign. It really helps to set the tone and encourage giving. People like to see that leadership is invested and participating in the campaign themselves. We have a one-pager that will help you think through how you want to tap leadership this year, and we hope you'll utilize that. Finally, think of the charitable organizations in your campaign as a resource. They are relying on the unrestricted year-round funding that your campaign brings in, so they're more than happy to help. When you reach out to federations like Global Impact, it streamlines this process for you because we can connect you with the charities that have great resources, event ideas, and more. And now I'm going to turn it back to Melanie to share our final step. All right. Thank you, Deanna. So we've shared a lot of information in a short amount of time, and that was our intent. Now is step number five, which before I go into it, breathe and relax, because this is just the beginning, and we want you to enjoy the journey. We cannot emphasize enough the importance your role is in the success of your organization's employee giving campaign. Planning and preparation, those are definite necessities, but it's your energy, it's your enthusiasm, your determination, and the commitment to causes that are important to you and to your organization that are going to be instrumental in effectively executing your plan and inspiring and attracting others to join you in giving. This role that you have managing the campaign at your workplace is, it's a responsibility. This is a role and a responsibility that you have that you're organizing the employee campaign, campaign giving. Um, in addition to, we, are, we understand you're already heavy workload. So we speak to you on behalf of charities right now and say thank you. Thank you for what you're doing and what you're going to do this campaign season. Thank you for all your efforts and your team's efforts. And we even thank you and your organization for all of the donations that are going to be pledged this season. Know that you are making a difference. You're making a difference, not just locally, but in this entire world. Focus on that realization and feel good knowing that every dollar that you raise has the potential to change someone's life. Whether this is your first year or you've served many years organizing your employee giving campaign, this is truly a worthwhile effort and a unique opportunity. Keep that in mind as you're planning and in turn, as you're navigating that plan. There's an unexplainable joy in giving. So your final step is to have fun. And as you share this opportunity with everyone around you, again, embrace it and enjoy it, make those activities fun and engaging so that everyone at your organization is enjoying that spirit of giving. And remember, you've got this and you've got us. So this is, again, just the beginning. We wanna thank you for your time. We hope you found today's tips useful. We know it was done in a flash, but again, it's just the beginning and we hope it's useful in mapping out your campaign. Remember, you're gonna receive an invitation from our colleague, Cassie Cowell, She's going to have a link in there for that employee giving hub where you can find all the wonderful resources that we've covered today and more. Also, keep an eye out for a follow-up email that's going to have additional resources and a recording of today's discussion. One more stop on your journey through the resources is going to be our charity.org slash give site. There you can start today and check out all of our amazing charities. 
and be sure to reach out to us with your questions. We are truly so excited to engage with you this campaign season. As you can see, here's our contact information. It's our first name dot last name at charity.org. Call us, email us. Try to do it this week to set up your individualized campaign strategy session. Remember, we are here to support you. We're part of your success team and we are cheering you on. So we know some of you may need to hop off right now. And if you do, we say goodbye and we'll see you soon. For those of you who have a few more minutes to, to, to stay with us, we will stay on to answer any questions or uh, any final questions or comments. We welcome those. So Jillian, how are we looking? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. We have a question in the Q&A that I really appreciate. Thanks, Joy, for submitting it. It says, how many employees should you have to make this work? The nice thing about employee giving campaigns, if you don't already have one set up, is you can kind of start it with any um, staff amount. They're pretty flexible. I will say that most campaigns tend to right size, depending on the number of employees that you have. So if you run a really large company, um, you're going to want to get loop in a lot of volunteers. You're going to want to think about breaking it down by department or um, by sort of a regional office, things like that. If you have a really small team, it's pretty easy for the HR person or the um, if you have someone who works adjacent to philanthropy work um, for them to just kind of take it on for the for the organization. So it kind of varies. I would recommend reaching out to us so that we can kind of help you think through specifically what's on your mind with your particular company? Um, where are you guys at with sort of um, employee giving campaigns, any philanthropic work you've done in the past, what employees are interested in? And then we can kind of advise going from there because the options are kind of endless. So I, I hope that helps. I'm seeing another question. Ooh, can you please explain what a cause wall is? Yeah, uh, Melanie, do you wanna answer what a cause wall is? A cause wall is whatever you want to make it. <laughs> We've seen all kinds of um, agencies approach this in different ways. You can have virtual cause wall, but the important thing is to connect to a cause that's important to you. You know, there are all kinds of, of causes from, um, you know, for example, we have um, water relief efforts, we have um, refugee efforts, we have all kinds of causes. So, that's one thing that you could do is, is have a discussion at your organization about what causes are important to you as individuals, maybe even what kind of cause that you all share collectively, and then um, identify a place. It can be, again, um, on your uh, office internet or even on a physical wall where people are writing out what causes that are important to them. It can be on index cards. Uh, you can get creative and have them decide how they want to you know, decorate paper. This can be an uh, activity that you can come together as an organization and do and then put it on display. So that's something that's gonna stay in front of your workplace all throughout the campaign season. And so have fun with it. Think about how you can integrate that and then people can give to charities that actually are connected to those causes that they're passionate about. I'll also add, I've seen people build Slack channels that are specific to their employee giving campaign. And then as a part of that, you can have people share, you know, a charity that they're giving to or a cause that they're really passionate about. Um, under the cause wall umbrella, maybe I'd also include social media promotion where people hold up like little signs of like, oh, I'm supporting clean water. I'm supporting women and girls. Um, and, and that's kind of something fun and a little bit more organic if you're looking for content to add to social media that kind of hypes up your employee giving campaign to, to your employees and your customers. Yeah. And then we have another chat in here. You mentioned a sense of urgency. Do you have any staff on whether participation rates increase versus decrease for a shorter versus longer campaign line? We have traditionally hosted for four weeks, but wonder if two weeks might be more beneficial. I don't have any hard stats on you right now or on that right now for you. So I'd have to go take a look. But my sense is if you've always done four weeks, you should probably keep the four weeks because sometimes people don't really like change. So if they've come to expect that they have four weeks to make their decision, get reminders from you, have an event, have things that they kind of look forward to. And then if it really quickly shortens to two weeks, um, it may catch them a little off guard. I don't think there's anything wrong with having a four week campaign. It gives you more opportunities to, like Lauren was saying, get those different touch points and make sure you're reminding folks and making sure that this is staying on top of their radar. Um, 
you know, the, the sense of urgency, I think the advantage to having a traditional campaign where you have a set date that starts and ends is that you can add that urgency no matter how long your campaign is. So if your campaign is four weeks long, that last week is still where you're going to be using that message of, okay, you've got five days left to give. You've got four days left to give. Today is your last chance to give. Don't forget your last chance is today. So I don't think the length matters so much as it is just kind of the sense of urgency. Yeah. For those of you who are listening that are in an evergreen campaign model where you don't have like a hard start and end date, um, you know, it's going to be a little harder for you to create that sense of urgency. And so that's where I think leveraging observance days and cause days and things like that are going to help you because there is no last day to give. So instead it's, hey, today is all, today's International Women's Day. Like here's your chance to get involved with the causes that you care about and the charities that you care about. So, Jillian, one thing I would just add in there too is if you do have a shorter campaign, I think it's even more important to set a goal so that the time doesn't come and end and you have people who just decided not to give. If you keep that goal in front of everyone, then you're working together to reach that goal. You can even call it a flash goal if you have a really short campaign. Um, ultimately, it, it even though it takes multiple touch points for someone to give, the choice to give really only takes moments. So if you do have a short campaign, make the most of it. Enjoy it. Have, have some fun activities. Even in that short amount of time, um, people can give and you can make a tremendous difference. One last question, Joy, you're asking about connecting with us. It sounds like you have a couple of ideas that you're kind of thinking through. Um, I would go ahead and shoot us an email. Um, I'm going to say go ahead and email Melanie. Uh, and we can talk to you about what those options look like and kind of help you problem solve from there. But um, that's great. Charity Classic event. I'm kind of curious to learn more. So Yeah, absolutely. I think that's it, Melanie. I'm not seeing any other questions. Well, again, this is, you know, maybe the end of our webinar today, but it is the beginning of a wonderful campaign season. We are so, again, honored to be a part of your team, and we're looking forward to connecting with you. So reach out to us often and make sure that you set up that individualized consultation so that we can help you with some strategy. Have a wonderful rest of the day and an amazing 2022 employee giving campaign season. Thank you, everyone.